So now that you understand what a solid is, let's move on to the next primary state of matter. What in the world is a liquid? Solids, remember, are when particles vibrate around a fixed point, and therefore solids have a fixed volume and a fixed shape. Something is different, though, about liquids. And let's take a look at what that is. Now, just as a reminder, the kinetic theory of matter says that all particles are moving all the time. They're going to move a certain way depending on their state of matter. And they're always going to move faster if they are warmer, if their temperature is higher. A liquid substance is a liquid because the particles are sliding past one another. Now, think about what that says. The particles are sliding past one another. They're not just shooting around freely. They're sliding past one another because they're still attracted to each other, but they're not attracted so tightly that they form those lattice lines and make a crystal and hold together as a solid. There's freedom for them to move. This gives liquids some interesting properties. First of all, liquids have a fixed volume because the particles are still attracted to each other and they're not just going to spread to fill the entire container that they're in. When you pour yourself a glass of water, that liquid water is going to remain a puddle at the bottom of the glass. It's not just going to spread and disappear from the glass as it spreads out. Liquid substances keep their volume, but they do not hold a fixed shape. If you pour liquid into the bottom of a round glass, it's going to take on the round shape of the glass. If you pour water into the bottom of a square glass, it's going to fill the square shape of the glass. Liquids will take on the shape of their container. And it's because of the particles sliding past one another that they do that. The particles aren't holding each other in a rigid framework. They're allowing each other to move past, even though they're basically clinging to each other a little bit. Here are some examples of common liquids and again in these pictures there are some meaningful things to think about. Liquid water is a very necessary substance in everybody's life. You need to take in a lot of liquid water into your body to survive and God made it so that your body does some amazing things with water. It uses a lot of different properties that water has to survive. Liquid water is one of the most important substances on the earth. But there are other substances that are liquids as well at room temperature, one of them being liquid metal, mercury. Mercury is the only metal that exists as a liquid at room temperature. And it's a liquid because it maintains a fixed volume but can take on the shape of its container. Whereas all the other metals at room temperature will hold their shape. But it's also important to note that you can take most solid substances and heat them up to a high temperature and melt them. The picture on the right shows molten iron, which we use to make all sorts of products in the real world around us. Anything that has steel in it, that steel was at one time molten iron. When you heat up a solid substance to a high enough temperature, one of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to completely decompose and chemically change and become something else, or many substances will melt and become a liquid of the same exact substance that it was before. Now, here's where we need to talk about this a little bit. How is that a physical property if you're heating something up to an extremely high temperature? Well, all you're doing with molten iron is breaking the crystal bonds. You're not actually breaking bonds that are making the substance the type of substance that it is. Molten iron is still fundamentally iron. It's not a completely different substance. Here's a picture that shows what liquid particles do. Please notice that these liquid particles are sliding past one another. They are not staying in the same fixed place, but they are mobile, moving from one place to another, and that's what makes a liquid a liquid. However, the particles aren't just freely moving around either wherever they want to. They're still attracted to each other and confined to be near each other. Here's how I'm going to be showing liquids in this class. I'm going to be showing them as particles that are really close together, 
not spread really, really far apart. However, you'll notice that there are no lattice lines in the background holding these molecules of water together. These water molecules are free to roam wherever they want. Now, I'm going to do something right now that I don't usually do when I show liquids, but it's important for us to think about. I'm going to show you where some lattice lines are because you know what? These particles are still attracted to each other. They're still trying to pull each other together. They just have too much energy to pull together and make a solid. So they're going to pull together and slide past one another. That's what liquids do. So now you know how a liquid is different than a solid. A solid has a fixed volume and a fixed shape. It's not going to take on the shape of its container. In a liquid, the particles are attracted to each other, but not nearly as strongly as in a solid. So the liquid is going to have a fixed volume, but it's just going to take on the shape of its container as the particles slide past one another.